inside, can post up, has an array of moves on the baseline. He's real physical on defense and gets out in transition. And it's fitting on Christmas Day in Honolulu. We have red and green. SMU wearing the red. The home team, Hawaii, wearing the green. And Tony Padilla did the okie doke there on the opening tip. Tony Padilla with the ball fake. And now the opening tap is controlled by Hawaii. Same starting lineup now for Ron Gannad in all 12 games this season. Noel Coleman. Who had a season high tying 22 against Pepperdine in their first game of this tournament on Thursday. And the shot clock rolling down on the Bows. Noel Coleman down the lane. And an offensive foul called on Coleman. And the charge turnover away. Well, that's what Noel Coleman's going to do, and usually he shoots that little floater. He doesn't put his head down and thrust into the defense. That time, SMU did a very good job of rotating. They've got long forwards in the back who will attack the guards and take charges. Mustangs wins over Iona and Utah State. To get to this championship game as the pass deflected out stays with SMU. And Rob Lanier in his first season guiding the Mustangs previously at Georgia State, Siena, longtime assistant to Rick Barnes at Tennessee, and also at Texas, been at Florida. A well schooled Rob Lanier. Pull up on the baseline. That's the air ball from Zurich Phelps, but on the offensive glass on the weak side, Zach Nuttall, the transfer from San Houston State. Well, it's locked out, but the air ball provided a weird angle. And you could see that the guards, Phelps and Noel, just really attack. Can play inside or out. Bernardo De Silva, the turnaround. And the rebound grab by Samuel Williamson for the Mustangs. And look at this roster for SMU. A lot of transfers, and it's... Rob Lanier trying to weave everybody in and get used to playing with one another as Zurich Phelps goes to work. Well, he is, and he made the lineup change when he got to Hawaii and put Jalen Smith out at, at the point. It's really allowed Phelps and Nuttall more opportunity to score and takes a little bit more pressure off them, and they, they don't have to play the point. Inside to De Silva. out the three and the rebound FAO DG for SMU. Zurich Phelps runs the baseline and a quick six of the spurts for SMU to start this championship well, that, game. That makes Zurich Phelps so tough to defend. And more than most players, he just is very good, especially with a score mentality of cutting without the ball. So Muta Vea breaks the seal for the Rainbow Warriors. What Hawaii does best on defense is they take away the three-point line. But tonight, it's not going to be about that because SMU likes to get the ball right to the rim. Really good buzz and energy on this Christmas championship in Honolulu. Back and down. FAO DG and a three-second call. And that's a turnover on SMU. Outstanding post defense for Bernardo da Silva. For the head coach, Aron Gannad. Now, Aron Gannad, being around him this past week, he is a basketball junkie. He breaks the game down. His team plays a good system on the offense, but he's just a terrific team defensive coach. One-time champion at the Tim Wells basketball camp. MVP. And champion. Mutabe missing the challenge. Here come the Mustangs and Zurich Phelps. Pull up and Phelps way off. Here come the Bows. Four on three if they hurry. Joe Von McClanahan has done just a really special job all weekend running this Hawaii team. He had a career high 17 on Thursday against Pepperdine, followed it up with 16 in their win Friday night against Washington State. It's Noel Coleman, the drop off, and the lay in, Bernardo De Silva. Well, that's Noel Coleman at his best. We saw the previous possession when he. Went all the way to the rim. He dribbled too deep. That time he was more under control, waiting for the defense to bite. Dished it off to De Silva. And the lane, FAO DG 
Gigi steps through a double team. You can see what SMU is trying to do. They're going to move the ball quickly, then drive into the gaps, hope that Hawaii overhelps, and then they will dish it right at the rim. DG, a two time transfer, began at UTEP, then at Troy, now at SMU. Maka Hefu started his college career and a grad transfer to Hawaii from Texas. And he'll get to the line to shoot two. Good ball movement early. SMU, the early lead on the home team. SMU, good ball movement, good player movement, excellent spacing, and gaining confidence with their team play by the game here in Hawaii. Houston knocked off Washington in 2019. We didn't have a 2020 tournament because of COVID. And speaking of because of COVID, last year we did not have a championship game. Vanderbilt was supposed to play Stanford. And because the Cardinal had a COVID outbreak within their program, there was no championship game. And Vanderbilt was declared the champion. There's Kamaka Hepa at the line for Hawaii. Again, the Bows in the championship game of this tournament for the first time. Oh, all that makes you appreciate this and the energy in this building and two really good teams and talking to the Iona coaches and the other coaches in the tournament about SMU and like how they got to this point. It's, it's pretty simple. They're, they're a good team built with a lot of new faces, a new coach, and it's taken some time to put it together, but they've done it all this weekend in Honolulu. Levon McClanahan on the run out, the lob for Samuta Bay, and it's broke up, and a foul called against Hawaii. It's ill advised pass from McClanahan, looking for a bay. And the foul is on Bernardo De Silva of Hawaii, his first. Yeah, McClanahan just made his mind up early that he was going to go, try to go over the top, and he just tried to force the situation. SMU was back on defense and had De Silva covered. You mentioned all the new pieces that Rob Lanier has, and he's a new coach with all these transfers and an entirely new roster, essentially, for SMU. As the pretty drive in reverse from the Louisville transfer, Samuel Williamson, puts SMU up four. But how challenging is it for Rob Lanier trying to mesh this new group? Well, there's so much that's going on when you take over a new job. But when you have to bring in all these guys that don't know each other, a lot of them have not been used to winning either. When you talk about Williamson, you know, he came from Louisville. They kind of lost their winning edge there. And now you're trying to build a team and chemistry and teach them how to win at the same time. Well, Coleman had a good look at a three, and here comes SMU, but stolen right back by Jovan McClanahan. He then lost it. Body's diving for it, and SMU comes away with it. Rob, Rob Lanier talked about Kulabali. You see him out there on the floor. He's an important piece as well because give him a backup point guard, but he just puts his head down there. And the offensive foul on Jefferson Kulabali. Montreal native is a transfer from Washington State. And he's given him some good minutes this weekend, but this time he just forces the, es the issue. And McClanahan slaps in at the ball and just falls down out of off balance and draws the charge. Making up McClanahan full court is Kulabali. Mustangs who played a tough schedule already. Arizona State, New Mexico, Dayton, and Texas A&M. A couple of challenging games in Honolulu leading up to this championship game. Samuta Avea lines it up. And the rebound, Samuel Williamson for the Mustangs. But he eight and three, they've won three straight. Tripped up a foul that's on Noel Coleman. That's his second. As the feet got tangled up with Keon Ambrose Hilton, the Alabama transfer. So an early decision for Iran Ganon with Noel Coleman picking up foul number two. Well, Rob Lanier decided when he got to Hawaii that we're going to do a couple things. We're going to switch up our lineup. We're going to put Jalen Smith at the point, and we're going to play more people. And we're going to get. Get our guys and try to get a rotation set during these three games. 
Stefan Dorovich missing the three. The inbound here is Kamaka Hepa. And the jump hook by Hepa is way off, and it's grabbed by Jefferson Koulibaly for the Mustangs. Now a three for Zurich Phelps, and Samuta Vea clears. Justice Jackson just checked in. Pushes for Hawaii, and Jackson. Tough shot, and seeing Hawaii, Tim, it looks like forcing some things here early. Well, the length of SMU is bothering the smallest guards, guards of Hawaii right now, and that's where Jackson, you got to take your time, or else you're not going to get good clean looks. They look, the miss from the corner by Stefan Todorovic, and a foul against Hawaii going for the rebound. And it's called on Kamaka Hepa, his first. Already four team fouls against the Bows. His early sub for Ron Ganat, the first appearance in the tournament for the freshman for Hawaii. And Cody Williams, who has played sparingly this year for UA. And he harasses Zach Nuttall, forcing the turnover. He stuck his foot off there on Nuttall, but you see. The length of SMU from top to bottom. They get long, they do a lot of switching on defense, and Hawaii's not going to be able to force the issue. They're going to have to move with the pass. And the steal, racing up the floor is Zurich Phelps. Scoops it left, it's short, but cleaned up. No, wave it off. We're going the other way. Emery Lanier, the son of the head coach, Rob Lanier, was there for a put back, but he pushed off the four, grabbing the rebound, and then he goes back to Hawaii. Four point lead for the Mustangs. Championship. Switch to boost. Also won an NCAA tournament game for the first time is in that 2016 NCAA tournament in Spokane. They knocked off Cal. Uh, being uh, around around the last few days and talking to him and watching him run a practice and his in-game coaching very impressive head coach here in Hawaii They're very fortunate to have him dumped inside Samuta Bam missing a good look and then Dion Riley the offensive glass fighting for it but SMU controls and that length of SMU you better get a body on those bigs and inside off the window and it's SMU doubling up. Oh, he is F.A. Odigi with the bucket. Been a rough start for Hawaii offensively. They're two for ten from the floor. Three turnovers. They're 0 for three from three. And there's a foul on F.A. Odigi, his first. By the way, all 12 points for the Mustangs. Team have come inside in the paint. Right at the rim at point blank. And that's good. Scout and strategy by Rob Lanier to understand that you know they're not a good three-point shooting team anyway, so don't force the issue. Space the court. They're not going to give a lot of help, so you can get to the rim or get it inside. Maka Hepa. And he stepped on the sideline. Beyond Riley gives it back to SMU. So we're almost nine minutes in. Rainbow Warriors have only six points. And they're in a drought right now of about four and a half minutes. Well, this is what SMU did to Utah State on Friday afternoon here. They just got up into Utah State, took away their threes, pressured them, overplayed, and played really rock solid defense on the interior. And diving for the loose ball, but Cody Williams was on the sideline. And it's an SMU ball. And Rob Lanier's team in that game Friday, the semis against Utah State, they shut down the best three-point shooting team in America. They did, and they, they smothered them. They got up all over them, and they used their length. They're physical, they're quick, and they close out in a second. The back down, and Zurich Phelps comes up empty. Deion Riley. Not really known for his offense, but the pull-up jumper ends the drought for the Rainbow Warriors. I like Deion Riley. He just makes some, does a dirty work out there. He can guard multiple positions, and he's always involved in the mix on the glass. And the finish. 
Nash elevating and off the window, Zach Nuttall. That is jet quick. Back to a six-point lead for the Mustangs. Deion Riley again. You see Deion Riley at 6'6". He's got a real quick first step and can elevate quickly, but he also has that power. You look at those shoulders. Just very physical. And a foul before the shot. Wave it off. As FAODG was going to work, but the foul in the post committed first by Bernardo De Silva, his second. Well, as you said, he's not known as a shooter, but they just back off him. It's just a simple little foul line jumper there. Williamson's got to get tighter in here. He just finds a way to get an angle. Got to take away the right hand as well. Riley, who's been playing well and has been involved in the offense a little bit more recently for Hawaii. In fact, the final game before this Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, Beyond Riley had a career high 13 in a blowout win over St. Francis here in Honolulu. Seven foot one freshman, more set. Defending FAODG, checking in for Hawaii is the miss inside by FAODG. Ravon McClanahan on the first and coming over Samuel Williamson. Blocks the shot. Well, good job by Moore Sec down on the other end defending around the rim. And he's here, McClanahan. This is what he's been successful with all weekend. But be careful with those SMU long athletes. From behind. Now on the inbound, it's the second on FAO DG. Five team fouls on SMU now. And for the Mustangs, Ojai is in. Transfer from Eastern Michigan. So DG will sit with the two fouls here in SMU up four. Both coaches going deep in their bench early in this game and understanding it's going to be a long, physical-type game and some foul issues could develop. And again, it's the third game days for these teams. Ron the Rainbow Warriors. In this championship game for the first time, Deion Riley backing down. Short by the 7 1 freshman and the rebound grab by Jalen Smith for SMU. He's just probably a step or two out of his range down the box. Pull up from Nuttall. And a foul going for the rebound, and it's on Mojai of SMU. Fighting through. Mojai's got to stay out of that mess. Unless he slide in, he uses that athleticism to find some inside position on the glass. The soft pressure, an extended zone. They'll press on the wings. They'll trap on the wings and they'll rotate back. Lob underneath the finish. Should be excited too. They did a good, real good job attacking this. It was kind of a half court trap, but they never got kind of a no man's land with all their traps and no one rotated on the back. It was almost like SMU was maybe confused of what defense they should be in. It extended, it looked like an extended matchup, and then the ball went to the wing and two defenders went there, but they never established a trap. Catch the good vision to throw over the top. Second. Moore set the and one free throw. And it's a one point game. Zurich Phelps in a block on Jovan McClanahan. And the first on McClanahan. That's team foul number six against the Rainbow Warriors. The next one will put SMU to the bonus for the rest of the half. 
good job in the last three or four possessions, Roxy, just taking away that inside. They're doing a better job guarding the ball, but also not allowing good low post position because SMU clearly from the get-go tonight has tried to get the ball right to the rim. Especially defensively since coming off the bench for Arun Ganon. Well, he has been in a stance. He fights over the top of this handoff and just uses that physicality and good presence of mind. Cody Williams doing his job off the bench. He played in only five of the first 11 games for Hawaii this season and didn't play much in those games. Jovan McClanahan. More set tries to tip it in. The loose ball. Beyond Riley tries to save it. It belongs to SMU. Hawaii has been trailing the majority of this one, but more set the freshman Tim trying to help the Bulls come back. More set is trying to get everybody in the holiday spirit here in Honolulu with authority. It's not Christmas for him. It's poop time here tonight. The rough goal of it for the Mustangs recently, and Hawaii has found some semblance of a rhythm after that rough start. And it's, it's really because of their defense. Their defense has been much better, and offensively, even without Noel Coleman, they found some life from the bench. Emery Lanier weaving his way in. Leans in, charge, offensive foul Lanier. Second foul on Lanier, and the charge gives the ball over to Hawaii. Well, Emmer, Lanier did a good job of kind of weaving his way into traffic, but you see jumps in the defense, into the defender instead of going straight up. There's Williamson again, trying to back in, but the defense of Hawaii getting up. Everything is contested in the last four or five minutes, and there's Hepa again. The first time he's been able to get his feet set and get a clean look from the perimeter, SMU kind of lost him in transition. Good job by Hawaii finding the trailing Hepa. That's where he's comfortable. First lead for the Rainbow Warriors on an 8 nothing run. More set blocks the shot. Zach Nuttall with the air ball pulled down by the 7-foot-1 set. And more set is making his presence felt. He and Hepa now. Drought of over four minutes for SMU. Kamaka Hepa. And the rebound here is Zach Dunall for SMU. Would have been a little quick by Hepa. He's, he's feeling it there, but good job by SMU to contest out at the top. Good quick burst to the basket. And Zach Dunall will get a couple of free throws. And you talked about his quickness earlier. We saw it again right there. That burst that he has initially, that first step. Really hard to guard because of the fact that he doesn't catch it being stationary. He's on the move. And he's so strong. He's so long and quick. And he's flying from that weak side. You've got to really have your head on a swivel and try to get one step over the top of his sh outside shoulder to try to deny him the ball, force him outside where he isn't as comfortable. 77% foul shooter, and that all the miss. Transfer from Sam Houston State, where as a junior, he was the Southland Conference Player of the Year. Played his first three years at Sam Houston State. 
Last year with SMU, averaged just under seven points per game. And Friday against Utah State made his 100th career start between Sam Houston and SMU. So a lot goes into Roxy when you take over a new program like Rob Lanier has with all these new players. And, you know, he just said, just, I'm trying to build confidence individually and within and talking to these guys. And he also has switched up a little of his scheme where they don't have as much freedom. You know, occasionally he wants them to have freedom and not think about what they need to do. But he's kind of tightened up the offensive system. Deion Riley in a foul. That's the third on Emory Lanier as SMU a little bit too aggressive that time. Deion Riley doing a good job of moving without the ball. And he turns that corner. He curls off that little pin down screen and he knows where he's going. He's going with the right hand all the way to the rim. Two shots for Beyon Riley. 77% free throw shooter. And the first one is stroked. He'll have another. He has five points off the bench. Tied with Kamaka Hepa for the Hawaii lead in points. And so Lanier with three fouls. We'll have to check out as Jefferson Kulabali comes back for him. Deion Riley, the native of Chula Vista down near San Diego. And he puts Hawaii up three. Interesting, when Deion Riley was looking to go to college, he was trying to get recruited, didn't have much interest. And he was hoping to latch on. He just happened to be over here on a family vacation when the University of Hawaii reached out to him. And he said, I'm here. And he just came over to the campus for an unofficial visit. And he's locked in with the UH as the air ball. And the miss by Fionn Riley at the putback as Cody Williams came up empty as well. Spin on the baseline and the follow. That won't go. It's like there's a lead. On top of the SMU basket. Well, More sec was in the neighborhood. He didn't block that shot, but he certainly altered it. He is playing terrific off the bench for Hawaii. Kamaka Hepa, they left the ball, but then he missed the shot. More sec misses at the rim. And SMU trying to settle down here. Well, there's been nothing easy at the rim. Both teams doing a great job of rotating and contesting. No field goals for the Mustangs in six minutes. They are one for their last 10. They were six for 12. Open three, and it's knocked down by Stefan Todorovic. Todorovic was ready to lock and load. He has feet set, perfect pocket pass. Knocked it in. Confident. Todorovic played at the same prep school that more sected prolific prep up in the Bay Area in Napa. And that ties the game. Justice Jackson, and Morsef wasn't looking for the pass. And a turnover committed by the Bows. We're not it. Late in the first half, championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines. Diamond Head Classic. Santa didn't come of it here on Tuesday night. So everybody's relaxed and having fun and enjoying the, the island, but these coaches are stressed to no end. And for them to spend a lot of time take away from their preparation just shows their commitment to a great cause and Iran has uh, did a great job of that event. And every year hosts that event in conjunction with this tournament and a worthy cause and another tremendous event and a strong donation of $30,000 from that event on Tuesday night and quarter three and a three for Zurich Phelps. <laughs> Well, that's un -Hawaii like because the fact that Justice Jackson got his head turned in. Usually they stay home to shooters and cover the three-point line in the corner. Morissette foul going to put that. And he'll go to the line as it's on Keon Ambrose Hilton. And Morissette has had an active first half for Hawaii. And the freshman will step up to the strike. Team foul number 10, so the double bonus for Hawaii the rest of this half. More sex, very difficult to keep off the glass, not only because of his length, but it's kind of slippery down there. He slides, he moves, 
He doesn't stand and try to get rebounds because of his height and length. He, he's active. He rolls in, he'll get one more. Wednesday night, we'll have an SEC doubleheader for you on ESPN2 in the app, number 23 Auburn, hosting Florida. First game at 7 Eastern, then a couple of 11 and 1 teams square off. Number 10 Arkansas and LSU at the Merritt Center in Baton Rouge. Great night of hoops. SEC doubleheader coming up on Wednesday. Score set hits both and makes it a one point game. Five points, four rebounds, two blocks for the freshman set in the first half. Eric Phelps leads all scorers in the game with seven. Step back. Jalen Smith. Fade away from Smith. His first point. Well, Smith's been very efficient for Rob here over this weekend. And we changed the starting lineup, put Smith at the point, and he has flourished. Hepa trying to drop it off for Seth to flip it out by Keon Ambrose Hill. 14 on the shot clock, and now Noel Coleman coming back for UH as he picked up his second foul early and has been sitting for about the last 11 minutes. Well, Iran Gannat had a decision to make with Joe McClanahan also with two fouls. You, you the entire starting backcourt on the bench. So I think it Coleman a little rhythm, a little playing time before the half, so he doesn't come back in the second half ice cold. And he trusts his veteran guard to not get his hands in the wrong place and get the third. Tough shot. Well challenged by SMU as Samuta Bea comes up empty. Zurich Phelps. Around the screen. Leans in, counted, and won the foul on Cody Williams. Zurich Phelps asserting himself right now for Rob Lanier. Well, he's a 6 3 guard, but he can play guard, forward, big man. He's got a lot of different things he can do around the basket, especially when he has that type of height advantage. He used that little rub screen at the top and found an angle. And he knows that those angles will be there because on ball side, Hawaii's not going to dive in and help with that secondary defender. They're going to stay home on the shooters on ball side. One of the most improved players in America, Phelps, former Texas Mr. Basketball, misses the free throw and it's controlled by the Bows. All points for SMU have been in the paint, free throws or a three. And diving forward the steal, Jefferson Koulibaly, the great defensive play, and gliding in the reverse, Zurich Phelps with 11 and SMU, the Mustangs. Late push here in the first half have gone up seven, their largest lead. Six straight for SMU. Well, defense, spe a specialty, hustle, the extra play, extra pass, and then big time player in Phelps. With the coach Tim Welsh, Roxy Bernstein with you, a 6 nothing run for SMU. Well, Jovan McClanahan out of the game with some foul issues. Cody Williams has played a really good game so far, especially defensively. At that time, just fooling around with the ball a little bit too much at the top. Put the ball right in front of him, and it got snared. Here's a 1-2-2 look from SMU. 75 seconds left in the half. Hawaii just won for their last 10. They missed their last seven shots on the floor. In fact, down about 5.15 without a field goal. Samuta Vea lost the handle. Last touch by Zurich Phelps. It belongs to the Rainbow Warriors. One thing about SMU, they continue here this weekend looking for a new identity. They play very well offensively, but their numbers defensively on the year aren't really that special. Rob Lanier, his teams through the years have been very good defensively. And a foul, Darren George for the bump on the inbound, and that will result in a couple of free throws for Hawaii. And it's on Samuel Williamson, his first. But SMU has renewed commitment this weekend to defense, and they've been good on the glass, which they haven't been consistent with all season long. And Rob Lanier said at one point they had some time off. He gave the guys a few days off himself. He took him 
went back to Atlanta to his home and kind of refreshed his thoughts and changed their offense, changed their lineup a little bit. A couple things, their schemes defensively, tweaks, and that will happen throughout the course of the season. And got a good veteran coach, been in the game 33 years, and he's not going to panic in the first month and a half of the season. He's got to get his team just to believe in what he's preaching. One more for Samuta Avea, 83% foul shooter. And he hits both in a run. Get out subbing both guards out. McClanahan and Coleman with the two fouls, bringing Justice Jackson and Cody Williams back. Not wanting the guards to get foul number three before halftime. Eric Phelps, the pull up. And he's starting to get it going now. He's got 13. Oh, he just shot right over the top of Justice Jackson. Got a big size advantage. Got a little room. Quick family. Justice Jackson gets inside. And an offensive foul on Jackson. And the charge and the giveaway for Hawaii. Without McClanahan and Coleman on the court. This is what happens. Sometimes you try to trust your guards, your backups to run the offense, and sometimes they try to do too much. So a seven-point lead for back to 1983, the Rainbow Classic. And SMU in the championship game beat Hawaii. That was a team that had John Cunt. And SMU knocked off the Rainbow Warriors to win. Championship SMU also won the consolation championship in the 1987 Rainbow Classic, which is now played earlier in the season. It used to be an event right after Christmas. Five seconds and a half. Zach Dudall on the baseline and the tip in at the buzzer. Zurich Phelps comes in from the weak side. And it's a nine-point lead for SMU with the Mustang. And he had that tip at the buzzer, which could really propel SMU here in the second half. As the Mustangs ended the first half on a 16-4 run. And the 22 points put up by Hawaii in the first half is the fewest ever in the first half of a Diamond Hit Classic Championship. And going right to work inside, and Samuel Williamson... And SMU is up 11. Samuel Williamson, you've got to give him a little space out there. He's not a three-point shooter. That time they closed out too high, and he took advantage. And the guards for the Bows get going as Noel Coleman slips, trying to turn the corner. Muta Vea. Shot clock down to six. Bernardo De Silva inside. And with the left hand cutting back, Bernardo De Silva with the bucket. Good job by De Silva. He didn't play much in the first half either. And he's important because Morsek played well, but De Silva is more of a scorer. And there's reason why he's the starter. Samu Tavea breaks out from the pack. Jovan McClanahan thought about it. Moves in, and the pull up. And the first points by the starting backcourt. For Hawaii and it took him over 21 minutes. Well, that's what Hawaii needs. McClanahan's become a scorer this week, and not to run everything through him, but he starts doing that. That'll free up Noel Coleman as well. Samuel Williamson and the rebound grab by Bernardo De Silva. Well, good job by Kameka Hepa that time. Took a step off Williamson, but still got up and contested. Open Kamaka Hepa. And the rebound, Samuel Williamson for the Mustangs. Transition, Jalen Smith, a three. Not really known for his offense, but a big shot to put the lead back to double digits for the Mustangs. Well, clearly SMU, they run positionless basketball, and it's Phelps, it's Nuttall, and it's Smith. Whoever gets it can push it, and they look for the other guy flying up the wing. Leonardo De Silva. Across the key, throws up a wild shot, falling away. And it's grabbed by SMU. All knocked away to steal. Noel Coleman leads the break. Coleman 
Bumped by Phelps before the shot. And a foul on the floor is the first on Zurich Phelps. The steal, Hawaii trying to capitalize in transition. Well, that's, that's what Hawaii needs to do. They need to try to find some easy buckets in, in transition and do a better job contesting, getting off the glass, and then they need to look up court to Coleman. McClanahan darts inside and a tough fadeaway as he was moving off to his left and it's controlled by the Mustangs. Defensively cut off driving lanes and then got up and contested when Nuttall tried to shoot that fadeaway, and that's what they need to get back in this game and then get out transition. Kamaka Hepa lost it three on one back the other way. The lob to Samuel Williamson. That's been SMU's MO since they landed here on this island. Terrific defense, sharing the ball, getting out in transition. Largest lead of the night, and the Mustangs. Up 12 on the Rainbow Warriors. Noel Coleman had a good look, and a foul going for the rebound. We'll stay at this end, the third on FAODG. Kamaka Hepa took the ball a little bit too deep. He put his head down, didn't read the defense, loses control, and then here we go. They do a great job of moving it up the court with the pass and the finish. With the way SMU's taking control, Tim, of this game recently, what can Hawaii do to try to make that surge and get back? Well, it's got to start on the defensive end of the floor. They've got to try to make... SMU feel uncomfortable. That's easier said than done with with Phelps and Nuttall. They, they are just real good defense uh, offensively, and they're hard to guard, especially why he lacks the size to guard them. Left it short, challenge of the rims are at Phelps, out of bounds, SMU goal. One more look at this alley-oop, because it was a nice gift for everybody to watch. Oh, yeah, Manoa. And you can't get anything better than the University of Hawaii band playing the theme from Hawaii 5 -0. One of my favorites as a youth. You were a big Jack Lord fan? I like Jack Lord. Cool dude. Did you like the, the reincarnation, the second edition of Hawaii 5 mm. I, I liked it a lot. I was a big fan of it. I wasn't locked in on it. So awful. Indifferent. Got con. No Jack Lord, though. That's yeah. well, that's Hope at some point the band learns the theme to Magnum P.I. Yeah, that's the other one. They haven't played it. Sammy Williamson attacks. Challenged by Kamaka Heppa. Well, good job by Rockinot to put Heppa on Williamson. He was giving Why some hits there early in this half, but the length of Heppa bothered Williamson at the rim. Hepa backing down. Noel Coleman, the kick. Samuta Vea moving in. Five on the shot clock. Stripped by Stefan Todorovic. I thought Coleman was open. He wasn't ready to shoot. He looked like he was hesitant. He should have fired on that ball reversal. Zurich Phelps in and out. Noel Coleman the rebound. Now he may have had the best luck he's going to get all night in the last season. It's been few and far between. I mean, SMU... They are in a stance, they use their length, their, their arms are out, they're contesting, they're chasing the dribbler down and creating turnovers. Jovan McClanahan had it knocked away, but then SMU gives it right back. And a turnover committed by the Mustangs. 14 and a half minutes to go, it's the largest lead for SMU. Championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic in Honolulu on Christmas night. 
as Hawaii in the championship game for the first time. After victories over Pepperdine and then Washington State in the semis. SMU with wins over Iona and Utah State. Utah State won the third place game earlier tonight against Wazoo. Another to Silva. Underneath, draws a foul and one. Good right, job by the Silva. There wasn't much there. Down low, but he had a little bit of space in the lane. And he's backing his way in. And the last second, a little body bump. By help. Second foul on Keon Ambrose Hilton. Bernardo da Silva just a 41% foul shoot. And Hawaii a perfect 10 for 10 from the line. And it's a single digit game. Well, Keon Ambrose Hilton did a pretty good job, but just was reaching in a little bit too much. And Keith Kimball got, caught him on the backside. Zach Nuttall. Jovan McClanahan. Labali getting away with a reach in. Finally, they get him. He fouled McClanahan about three times. He's coming up the middle. He gets charged for one. Can't call him all, Roxy. I know things seem expensive over here in the islands, but he worked for that one. Wow, that just shows you the intensity of SMU and Rob Lanier again going in deep into his bench early. And both. Noel Coleman. Open beyond Riley. Three. Uh, that's a good job by Noel Coleman. He was probing, 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 just waiting for SMU to to fight a little bit on that dream penetration, and then he found Riley on the perimeter. Just the third three for Bion Riley this season. And silencing the crowd is Zach Nuttall for SMU. Nuttall is so good at creating that angle off the bounce of the dribble penetration, but then just floating in the air, kind of just hanging above the defender. Makahefa rattles out the corner three, last touch by SMU. And the pace is picking up here quickly offensively for Hawaii. Will Coleman struggling to score but becoming a distributor. And coming down the other end, other end it's metal just hanging, defying gravity. He's so smooth and quick. And a five-second call, a turnover. Why he can't get the ball in bounds. And it goes right back to the Mustangs. We're up eight. Still lots of time left in this championship game. Well, SMU does not relax when the clock's on or when it's off on the baseline out. There. They really pressured the ball, and McClanahan at 5'10 couldn't see over the longer SMU defenders. These two teams, once upon a time, were in the same conference. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Now meeting in this championship game at Honolulu. Zurich Phelps. And the rebound, there's Noel Coleman ripping it down for UH. And a foul. It's on Phelps, his second. Well, good job by the officials because SMU is got away with a lot of hand checks and body bumps. And. All you have to do is call a few, and that'll get him to back up a touch. And that's what Rob Lanier wants. He wants him to be physical. He wants him to be nose-to-nose. -nose. Now, that's that Rick Barnes defense. Just solid, just everything contested. No gambling, but a lot of toughness. Hooked away from Bernardo De Silva by Zurich Phelps, but Jovan McClanahan runs it down. Now trying to find De Silva, and he's grabbed to the post. 11.59 to play. Mustangs up eight on the Rainbow Warriors.
game. They're up eight on the home team, the University of Hawaii. And the fouls already six on SMU in the second half. The Rainbow Warriors have yet to be called for one since the break. His last one against Franklin Agunane, the transfer from Loyola, Chicago. As the Bows go inside to Bernardo De Silva, who along with Fionn Riley leads you age with nine. Well, that was an excellent out-of-bounds call. Coming out of that timeout, just got De Silva on the move with no backside help. At the rim, and it rolls in for SMU. Jalen Smith. Who averages three points a game, has seven for the Mustang. Well, playing with a lot of confidence. Gets over help sometimes on Phelps and Nuttle. And just when you do that, Smith finds a driving lane. Noel Coleman has it knocked away. Beyond Riley to layup. Off the loose ball. Well, Hawaii's playing with a lot more energy this half. The first half, I think the, the length and the physicality of the defense of SMU got into them and bothered them. But they've adjusted well. They're moving the ball better and attacking the rim. Eric Phelps on the drive and a foul. It's the third on Jovan McClanahan as Phelps put 15 in the first half, yet to get on the board here in the second half. And that's the first team foul against the Rainbow Warriors since halftime. Well, Jovan McClanahan couldn't guard any better on that possession, possession against Eric Phelps, except Phelps is just so long. He just found a way to get the ball and get an angle and McClanahan had no other way to stop him but just try to throw his body in front of him and he got run over but he didn't have legal guarding position. Over Texas High School Mr. Basketball. And you talked about it earlier Tim. Last year as a freshman averaged fewer than four points per game. He's averaging 19 and a half a game this year. With the coaching change, Tim Jankovic re retiring after last season. And Rob Lanier taking over, and I think for Zurich Phelps, he enjoys playing under Rob Lanier. Well, sometimes it's about opportunity. You know, SMU had Kendrick Davis a year ago, and they're going to run everything through him. And that just is a huge jump. I mean, you see guys go from like three points to 14 or whatever. I and mean, this guy, he's one of the most improved players in all of America. Well, Coleman is yet to get on track. In the lane, Coleman falling away, missed everything, and it's pulled down by F.A. Odigi. In the length, bothering Coleman in the lane with, with those little scoop shots. Off balance, Beyond Riley the foul as Zach Nuttall will head to the line. First on Beyond Riley. Ten sixteen remaining in this championship game. Zach Nuttall and Zerk Phelps are terrific players, but they play off each other very well. They're unselfish, they look for each other, and Bob Lanier's done a nice job of mixing in them on the wing and at the at the point. Women's basketball top 20 matchup Thursday on ESPN2 and the app. Is number 10 unbeaten LSU and Arkansas meeting Fayetteville 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN 2 in the end. Conference play right around the corner. Not all hits both, and now it's back to a 10 point lead for the Mustangs. Noel Coleman. to shoot Jovan McClanahan way out there. Launches a three. And it's followed by Bernardo De Silva who was by himself underneath. Well, they stayed on a little long on the pick and roll. On the, on the left side, they rotated, but when the shot went up, no one put a body on De Silva. of Kamaka Hefa changed the shot there of Samuel Williamson. Why?
Hawaii's had to run the shot clock down on numerous possessions. They just can't get comfortable early in the shot clock. Well, Coleman. Here is De Silva. And De Silva hits the step up. Uh, he's the guy. I think they need to go through him a little bit more because he's drawing the, the attention of the guards from SMU as well. And that will free up Coleman, but De Silva right now is having his way down the wall box. Crowd trying to make themselves a factor here in Honolulu in this championship game. FAO DG inside. Silences the Stan Sheriff Center. That's a pretty good battle down low with ODG and De Silva. They are going at each other. They, they are hungry for points and doing a good job of carving out space and demanding the ball. Bernardo De Silva again. Pushed a little bit out by F.A. DG and jump hook fell short. DG's using a lot of hands defensively. Two hands in the back, but he's getting away with it. DG and the rebound, Bernardo De Silva. Noel Coleman darts in. Coleman in his first points of the game. He averages 15 a game to lead Hawaii. Well, and it a, took him over 32 minutes. Excuse me, Roxy. That's how they have to get him going. Now get out in transition, outlet it quickly, and let him fly up the up the sideline. And a whistle away from the ball. It's on Bernardo De Silva. Jacking for position down low with FAO DG, his third. Bernardo De Silva has given Hawaii a spark in this championship game. On both ends, he's been one on one coverage on the inside by, with ODG, and they're looking for him because the guards have struggled to score. The guards have struggled to get good vision because of the length of SMU on the perimeter. But. Ron Ganat has kind of changed his game plan offensively this half, knowing that De Silva is a problem for SMU down low. And the Bows have not shot it well, Tim. They're 34% for the field. They're 2 for 11 from 3. And it's been an effort here in the second half from De Silva to go inside. Beyond Riley has also played tremendously for UH off the bench. Well, for Hawaii, I think it's, it's got to start with their defense in. Get stopped so they can get out in transition because they have struggled to score in the half court. Illegal screen. F.A. DG has just picked up foul number four with 7.22 to go. So DG heads to the bench with four. Zurich Phelps getting a breather here now as well. Just wasn't set. He was trying to set that little pin down screen for Zurich Phelps. Good call by Darren George. And jumped out the last second. That will put Hawaii into the bonus now for the rest of the ball game. Maka Hepa. Underneath. Comes back to the left. And the rebound. Terrific job underneath by Keon Ambrose Hill for SMU. Hepa just lost control of the ball. He made a really terrific move. Spun back to the middle with the left. But... Couldn't find its way. He's just one for eight from the field. He's had some good looks too. Stepping in, rattles out for a step into Dorovich. And a foul on Hawaii going for the rebound. Well, De Silva on the backside got caught by Tony Padilla. He was holding on to Keon Ambrose Hilton. And that's four on Bernardo De Silva with 640 remaining. That's team foul number four against the Bows, and more sec, who had a strong first half for UH, comes in. If they can get Kamaka Hepa going, that should free up well, Coleman a little bit, but he just can't get going. Another steal on the baseline out. Here they come. Deion Riley took it away. Real good job by SMU. Sprinting back in transition after the turnover. Jovan McClanahan to the basket, wave it off. And a foul on the drive. So it's a one and one and not a two shot foul because it happened on the drive. Well, Hawaii did its best to get the ball to the court, try to find an open man and kick it. Try to get an open three for Hepa or Coleman, but SMU does a real good job. Makes, misses, 
or turnovers of sprinting back and getting their defense set five on five. First on Jalen Smith of SMU. Jovan McClanahan, 82% from the line this season. And seconds given Hawaii some real good minutes off the bench, and that's a high percentage. Career high seven points for Sack. Four point lead for the Mustangs. Not all smooth. That man's got some big paws. He just held that basketball as he floated to the rim like it was a tennis ball. Scooped it up. Just so graceful. Noel Coleman darts in, has to flex it, goes into the Hawaii bench as Stefan Todorovic couldn't control it. Well, you were correct, Roxy, here. You see the block out takes place, but... Florida game, because you have Bruce Pearl against Todd Golden. Todd Golden was on Bruce Pearl's staff. They're very close. And, of course, we went through the whole Randy Bennett lineage, which Aron Ganat is a part of from Hawaii. As Bion Riley steals it back for the Bulls and looks to attack. Wave it off and a charge. Bion Riley, the offensive foul. Now, this is frustrating times for Ron Gennott. Comes out of a, come out of a timeout. You throw the ball right to SMU on the sideline out. And you steal it back and need the jump stop there. You, the whole world saw Williamson waiting to take the charge. Not sure he had legal guarding position. He might have been moving, but this he ran him over. That's a good call. Nuttall spinning in the key and it rolls around and goes for Zach Nuttall. Well, when he starts to spin in the lane, I think Hawaii needs to give a little bit more help because he's just shooting right over the top of those guards from Hawaii. Eight point game, five minutes to go, a foul on the floor. Away from the ball will put the bows at the line. Second on Samuel Williamson. And so with 5 02 remaining. The ninth team foul and a one and one and some confusion on who the shooter should be. Kamaka Heppo is trying to step up and take him. But it appears it'll be more sec at the line. And he's three for three at the stripe today. Seven points, five rebounds, two blocks, and only nine minutes for the freshman. Keith Kimball told Kamaka Heppo, uh, please don't try to trick me. Heppa tips the rebound out, but it's controlled by Zurich Phelps. Phelps backing down, has the height advantage against Jovan McClanahan. And can't get the bounce, tipped out of bounds, and we're staying here, says Keith Kimball. And it's last touch by the Bows. Well, fresh 20 for SMU. Excuse me, Rocky. Roxy, you can see what Rob Lanier is trying to do. He's trying to space the floor and just allow Nuttall and Phelps to play one-on-one -on -one in the lane. Stepping up for a three. Too strong from Williamson. And a foul going for the rebound and some frustration for Keon Ambrose Hill. Questioning the call. His third and that's the double bonus for Hawaii. You know, that's Rob Lanier had a strained look on his face. You know, that's not a smart play from Keon Ambrose Hilton because of the fact that, as you said, now it's the double bonus. And Hawaii did a good job on that possession. Hepa you know, laying off Williamson on the perimeter, knowing that he's not a good outside shooter, and but a very good driver. Keon Riley, two shots. And Riley. We'll have one more. Good to see Stefan Todorovic back on the SMU bench after that ankle rolled over on him near the Hawaii bench. It's Dion Riley now perfect. Four for four for the line. He is tied at Kerner High, 13 points. He has been terrific off the bench for Aran Ganat. Not all 
rises for three. And Jovan McClanahan pulls it down. McClanahan and Coleman, good job. That possession defending on the outside. Coleman's been quiet. Makahepa. Stripped by Zach Nuttall. And it stays with Hawaii 3.58 to go. The championship game, the Bulls are in the title game for the first time. The Mustangs trying to take the trophy back with them to Dallas. A great finish coming up from Honolulu. Rigger Reef Hotel right on Waikiki and while we have a moment on this Christmas we want to thank our crew they've put in long hours all week setting up working four games a day we only get to drop in and do two but the crew camera people everybody in the truck even Kyle here courtside with me people at ESPN events as well just yeah super thank you to everybody in. The best. Being with us on your Christmas. Noel Coleman gets to the bucket. And we have a four point game. But well, he's got to look for a shot more. He seems a little hesitant because he's had an off night. The length of SMU, the way they've defended him, but he's a good player. He can go make plays like that. Zach Dunnell. First back out. McClanahan trying to deny Zurich Phelps. Uh, he's doing a good job of denying him. Not all gets to the basket. Now that's where Noel Coleman's got to get up on Zach Nuttall's right hand and force him back to his left. Yvonne McClanahan trying to create. Well, Coleman gets to the basket. Lays it in. Well, he's starting to feel it down this end. That's a confidence. Found some open driving lanes. Good patience by Hawaii. Not in a situation like this with a potential huge stop on the line. I like, I like calling defensive timeouts to make sure your team knows what you want on the defensive end. And maybe tweak a couple assignments or a scheme or two on how you maybe guard a pin down screen or a pick and roll. And he also, Aranganon subs in the 7-1 freshman for a set as Bernardo De Silva's got four fouls. Zach Dunall to the basket and changing the shot is set. Playing in transition. So they got the stop. Can they chip even further into this lead as SMU is led by as many as 12 here in the second half? Well, he tried to push the pace. SMU got back and got their defense set. And while Coleman inside, more set and one. But that's on F.A. Odigi. He has fouled out of this game. Well, Noel Coleman, the last few possessions, has been very aggressive trying to get to the rim. That time the help came from the weak side. He, they closed him out on the baseline. He just kind of seemed to be getting big, keeping the ball up high, and then finishing. The and one free throw for Sack. He's three for four from the line. A career high nine points for the freshman. Stefan Todorovic is back in the game. I'm not calling it a Christmas miracle. But I'm stunned he's actually back in the game considering the way that ankle looked when he rolled it earlier. Last touch by Bion Riley, SMU ball. Uh, real good hustle. Bion Riley started to leak out, but when more sex at the line, you cannot leave the area. He gets back in the play, but good call by Darren George. Two-point game. It's the closest Hawaii has been in a long time. As there is Stefan Todorovic. Well, in the last possession, Rob Lanier called a little pin-down screen for Zach Nuttall, and they got up on his hip and made him curl to the rim, but the help came, and Hawaii's done, done a good job defensively. Zurich Phelps, three! Huge shot. Jovan McClanahan has been denying him without the ball. That time, 
Good move by Rob Lanier. They had him bring the ball up the court so he didn't have to get open. They just set a little rub screen at the top. McClanahan fell down and Phelps drilled it. His first field goal of the second half. Noel Coleman answers for the Bulls. Five straight made field goals for UH. Again, it's a two-point game. Well, the light has come on for Noel Coleman in a matter of five minutes. He has taken over this game for Hawaii. Phelps kept his dribble. Step back again. Phelps too strong. And the rebound batted around. It's loose. Jovan McClanahan comes up with a free lace. Coleman. Beyond Riley. And the weak side rebound. Samuel Williamson as Riley had a clean look. Probably not the shot that they wanted. He was open, but they need to be a little bit more patient. Timeout, SMU, but we went back and forth trading him and finish in this championship game of the 13th annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Well, Roxy, that's the sign of a good player. Noel Coleman has struggled all night long, but he never showed any frustration, still played with an even temperament, played hard on the defensive end, and then all of a sudden said, okay, I need to try to get my team back in this game, and he has. FAO DG is fouled out for SMU. On a tie up, it belongs to Hawaii. Jalen Smith. Here is Zurich Phelps. Off the screen. Pounded by McClanahan. Phelps. Shot clock violation goes to Hawaii. Oh, you can't say enough about Joe Ron McClanahan's defense on a big time player. Zurich Phelps was trying to go by him, could not get an angle because McClanahan was down and dirty in a stance right up in his chest. And still, Phelps got a pretty good look at it. But it was too late. Strong defense in the half court from Ron Gennad's team. And now, down to. 30 on the shot clock, 32.9 remaining. Jovan McClanahan gets a timeout of the front court. But they need to contain Coleman and force him off the three pole. Run get on sub, Samuta Avea back in the game. He's been sitting for a while on the UH bench. How far do you take it down? Well, I think you have to take it the best shot. You're losing the game, so you can't wait. You know, they're going to wait here a little bit, but I, I think you still have to take your best shot. You can't wait too long. I've seen teams wait too long, and then they get a rushed shot, and then they don't have chance, a chance for a second shot. Here is Noel Coleman. Lost it on the baseline. SMU ball. He tried to pivot and spin and dribbled it out of bounds. Now, this was a set play. But again, as the clock winds down, the players get a little anxious. I mean, especially when you're on the baseline, you don't know how much you don't know how much time you have. And then again, if you wait too long, you take a shot, you don't have a chance for that second shot. If and it was there too. If the game is tied, that's different. And keep in mind, Hawaii has a foul to give. 11.6. They've only committed five team fouls. So they have a foul to give before the next one would put SMU into the bonus. And Noel Coleman takes it with 9.2. You've got to give it right away. Each team has one timeout. That is the sixth against the Rainbow Warriors. Now, Hawaii has the possession arrow, Roxy, which means they can be super aggressive to try and go in and get a tie-up. They don't necessarily have to foul. I would say go for the tie-up first, be aggressive with it, so be it if they call the foul. Maybe you get lucky and get the tie-up. Jalen Smith will play it in. Gets it into Phelps, and he's grabbed by McClanahan. Eight seconds remain. One and one. Zurich Phelps is two for three at the line in this one on the season, 71%. So defensively in that situation, you have to have a call from the bench that's different from an automatic foul so your team knows you can be aggressive but SMU did a good job there's really no opportunity there for Hawaii to get a tie-up Phelps leads all scorers in the game with 20 
That's just five in the second half. One and one for Phelps. And Hawaii locks out. It's out of bounds off SMU. And Phelps going nuts. He wants a review here. Signaling to go to the monitor. He thinks it was off the Rainbow Warriors. Not sure what Hawaii was doing off that missed shot. Instead, he wins with the ball in the corner here. Each side has one timeout. So the reversal after the call on the floor was rainbow ball. The, after going to the monitor, the officials determined it was last touched by the Bows. It belongs to SMU. Well, good job by Hawaii. They're putting more sec on the ball to try to bother the inbounder. And also Jalen Smith smartly backs up. So it's not right on the end line. So the seven foot one sec applying pressure. And it comes into Williamson who's grabbed immediately by Kamaka Hepa. One and one for Williamson. It is the eighth team foul. And Williamson is a 62% free throw shooter. Well, Rob Lanier's team, you can you can see they are very well schooled in every type of situation that they've been presented here in this last two minutes. These end of game situations, they know exactly what to do. That time, perfect out of bounds play to just to get it in. Samuel Williamson, a one and one. In and out. Rebound, Kabaka Hepa, timeout, UH. Well, SMU has left some points, missing the... Kamaka Hepa is probably going to set a little rub screen to free up McClanahan. But Coleman's got to be aware that if they can't get in, he's got to flash back to the ball. They've set it to 4.8 seconds. So they've taken two tenths off. Samuta Vea will play it in. Here comes Jovan McClanahan. Races up the floor. McClanahan for the win! Go! SMU has a timeout, 58-57, the Rainbow Warriors lead. Okay, Roxy, here's what I'm giving you right here. This is where Jovan McClanahan misses this shot. Absolutely. If he makes it now, it's going to give SMU an opportunity to throw in a half-court shot to win the game. He missed. Samuel Williamson chucks it, and it is over. But did they get a timeout? Hang on. Tony Padilla says, and was pointing in the direction of Zach Nuttall. Was there a lane violation? I believe. So Tony Padilla giving a Ron Gennad an explanation. He was hit. So the and one free throw for the four point play, he missed it. SMU the rebound, they call timeout. Good smart play by SMU, but now. Obviously, they've got to play hard defense, and it's a prayer. Zurich Phelps offline. Now it's over. The championship of the 2020. 20